Alrighty, second time's the charm for this game. God help me. Alright, so. I already played this. Second time's the charm. Coming back to this because apparently this game, Fallen Knight, made by, I think it's called Fair Play, um, released for the Apple Arcade and then Steam, like, I think a few months or weeks later. Don't know, don't care. Um, the game got updated, and honestly, I think it was for the better that it got updated. Because uh, this is my second time around to this. And honestly, there was some improvements, but honestly, not by much. So, for those who don't know, um, this is someone's interpretation of like a Mega Man game. I actually looked up the interview for this. And they said that the inspiration for this was uh, Dark Souls, which I can see because of the pairing, which I'll explain in due time, and Mega Man, obviously. Platforming, um, skills, upgrades, you know, stuff like that. So, uh, not just Mega Man, though. Uh, Mega Man Zero, to be precise, because Lancelot here is a swordsman, and anybody knows Zero, um, he too is a swordsman, to some degree. Um, Oh god. Okay, so um this got a mixed review on Steam and for good reason because aside from the fact that this was dirt cheap, like around like five dollars. Um the game, like I said, got updated and honestly I would say that it's alright ish but still not worth going crazy for it so in the beginning i had trouble repairing in fact i still do because this drill man here just doesn't want to stay parried at all and yeah it's like no i'm just trying to parry and then missile man up there is just not letting him do the job so there you go all right perfect of course i say that but no like the parrying in this game is off at times so yeah got a miss review on steam bought this for like five dollars i mean it's five dollars as of now i don't know how long that's that's gonna last i don't think that's got even a price drop but no i was looking around like uh looking around looking up some uh fan-made mega man stuff you know like the corrupted or engine maverick wars stuff like that and I stumbled upon this, and I checked on Steam, got a mixed review, and I just had to see it for myself, and honestly, yeah, so, well deserved of that mixed review. Now, even though the game has been updated, that doesn't really mean much if all of the problems were not ironed out. So, the overall movement has been tweaked to make you feel better so Lance only here stops at a dime when you let go of the button on the d-pad so yeah now it's a bit more responsive um and I want to say boss fights are much better as they don't feel like they go on for longer than they should but there's still some issues um to be had in this so for one is the pairing on certain enemies um, the missile men here are my all-time most hated enemies in this game, but they pale like comparison to something else later down the line. Uh, drill enemies are hard to parry, so sometimes I just don't bother. I will say now that the currency or the honor points, that's what they're called, um, getting those are much better because um, before the patch, the only way to get these is to parry, and you already know just by looking at this that I that is not my strong suit. Now that's not to say that I think parrying games are awful. I mean I played kind of Bridge of Spirits, and even then the parrying that game felt a little tight because what exactly like what is the timing in enemy attacks does Kennedy the parry? Because so far it's just me, it's just her using the shield. And speaking of shields, <laughs> perfect segue, um, we gotta talk about parrying as a whole because when it comes to boss fights, it's practically non-existent here. So this dude, aside from the fact that he's dropping um, bombs from the shield, which, um, why? Um, honestly, I would have preferred it if you can just parry the shield 
but instead what needs to happen is I need to parry like one of their special attacks which you could read in the little notification before the boss fight in like three seconds I will never understand why they don't let you just read it and it, it, it's baffling to me that it gives you the option to press a button to start the stage but it doesn't give you the option to press a button to you know continue the boss fight that's the time I was speaking of where you need to parry all four of them to do what this game says disarm but um actually let me get into that real quick because even though i said that boss fights don't take that long anymore because last time they did um in this game uh you don't have to kill the boss you just have to disarm them those little x's right next to their name signifies how many times that they can be parried or disarmed parried them three times and you know the fight ends i guess it's like the pacifist way out but you know a pacifist i tried to be and a pacifist honestly i am not so even though i tried playing by the rules and it's just it like it's just not happening so you know i tried my best i tried parrying as many times as i could but just couldn't get it out and sometimes parrying is just suicide so i just treat this normally there's absolutely no reason to just keep dying over and over and over again just to parry them i mean you can try but again for first time players like myself who tried this i just said no i'll just fight like normal so you know trying to go for the parry here doesn't happen get smacked up against a wall god help me um also, a problem with this fight in particular, aside from dropping the bombs from the shield, I would say sometimes it's a camera, because, you know, just trying to get up on this wall and maintain distance, I can't see where the bombs are on the floor. So there's that, and then there's also, you introduce parrying on the special attack, why can't he just parry the shield? Okay, something like that, I can understand not being par parried. The shield when he throws it? can't be parried so you can just bounce it back like the Ganondorf fight from Ocarina of Time like that would have been so much better if you can just or you know just smack it just just smack the shield back and then you know you can disarm him that way no it has to be when he's just smacking Lance on up a bunch like yeah this right here so I'm just trying to figure out yeah like okay got it down that time the last time I didn't and it, it, it feels like it punishes you for trying and the the wait time to do that like right now he's not attacking him because I want to get the parry out but this is what it happened this is what happens when you try to wait for that opportunity to come you have to wait until he's ready to just do the smacker upper here instead of just parrying the shit when he throws it that would have been just way better so now the fight is just a damn waiting game and honestly I don't like that so there will be many problems that this game will has but let me get the positives out of the way positives will be some of the music and some of the character designs Lancelot looks pretty tight and this big guy also looks cool as well and honestly for a first attempt for a game like this um, leaves a lot to be desired like replayability or level design or just how many stages you get because this doesn't feel like an intro boss this feels like something you would introduce in a in a like a stage select and i can only imagine what kind of technique lancelot would have gotten if you defeated this man but no he doesn't get anything out of this now you do get techniques in this but they are honestly underwhelming and just leave much to be desired so uh, if you recall Mega Man X4 or you know any of the X games where Zero is playable then you would know that Zero gets um, just just unique or you know I say unique but eh, you know different types of sword styles rather be like a spin attack or an upper slash a downer slash a dash slash or you know something special like an energy blast so even though that is the name of the game here honestly it just feels bare bone and it just comes off as 
not really all that mind-blowing like it is subpar so try to go for the berry didn't happen so unfortunately you know just do this the old-fashioned way but at the same time i don't really care so then we get into the metroid part of the game uh he lost both his air dash and his double jump and now uh he has to use these points to get these upgrades back and among other things are uh, these other upgrades whether it be healing faster which I think the update kind of improved healing a little bit because healing takes forever to do uh, wrath of God which I think is like an ultimate attack but hell if I know how to actually use it um, more health more power cores to upgrade more things and you know equip them in you know it's just a general skill skill um, list here but thankfully with this update he can have much much more points to spend and can use it to greatly upgrade pretty much everything so here I'm gonna need help for sure and then later on power cores so that way he can equip more things give me the double jump back give him the double jump back okay so yeah going back to um my usual run so i'm trying to do this like last time but now with the knowledge that i have in my first playthrough of this uh i am now able to just do this um more pleasant like but that's not saying that it's gonna be smooth sailing so in terms of Lancelot's moveset, he's got the, you know, the one, two, three, jump, dash, wall climb, which is kind of like, kind of reminds me of Ninja Gaiden, or I think Shinobi? So, not like the wall climb from the Mega Man X games, where you have to keep jumping on the wall. Here, he can just, you know, wall climb up, and honestly, I like that, I like that. So, it's kind of like a ninja. So, you know, back to parrying, I tried to parry this guy, and it feels... Like, the window of opportunity here is so small. Like, I'm actively trying to parry this guy, and it feels like that the parry happens as he's swinging the hammer. Like, a moment before he swings the hammer. Like, a moment. I really don't like that. And there's an upgrade to make it bigger. Like, just to increase your chances of parrying. And, yeah so it, it's not really that great um, I criticized the level design earlier but I think this level design I might have to give this one props not only does this remind me of the crossover station from Mega Man Zero 4 where Zero has to deactivate like four security programs to enter Ragnarok but I I look at this and I think to myself if Blaze Heatnix from Mega Man X6 was like this I would have said this is just this is way better because you're going back and forth hitting these switches to activate this elevator and um, honestly it's just way better there's actual level in this instead of just being bombarded with the stupid nightmare sn uh, snakes or what players call donuts in X6 with their long ass health bars and don't even get me started on that one part with the with the rising fire not to be fused with the Rising Fire from X4. It's awful. Like, hands down, probably the worst level I've ever played in a game. And honestly, it it, it didn't have to be like that. Right? It it just it, it it didn't have to. So, you know, elevator stops and then it you know crashes. So, you know, just go, 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 go. I would dash here, but dashing for some reason it carries him a little bit in midair and Honestly, dashing doesn't really feel that great to do compared to, say, like, the uh, the Mega Man Zero games. Dashing in X or Zero or, or ZX is just more ple pleasant to use in comparison to this. And another thing I don't like about the level design here... Well, one thing I don't like about it is this lava pit. I really don't like that lava pit. Okay, it... Well, well actually, no, two things. One is the lava pit. And the other is the little flames that shoot from the ceiling that you can barely see and this area is proof of that because when I just want him to climb up this 
and he's getting one-shotted by flames that I could barely see. Like, okay, now I see the source of it. And then he had these little assholes popping out of nowhere. You know, like, the enemy placement sometimes, like, this right here is just bad. And then you get this. Like, I can't see that. And then you give me a bunch of hammermen, too. Like, that I can barely parry. So I'm trying to do it again. And again. And again. And again, and then, you know, just keep swiping at him, trying to get get it out, and it doesn't happen. Sometimes parrying just is kind of frustrating just to do. And I, you know, normally you would have to do this to get points, and thank God that is not the case. You defeat him, and you get the points. Personally, I would have liked a currency um, mechanic, kind of like Mega Man X8 with the medals, where, you know, you get medals, kind of like coins in Mario, or... You get medals by defeating enemies. And then you can use these medals to upgrade anything. Health, um, movement, you know, stuff like that. So, honestly, would have preferred that. So, now we go here. And this is the one boss that I really didn't like. Mainly because he can actually combo you just by slamming the club on the ground. At first, I thought it was idle animation. No, that's an attack, also, and there are many, many problems when it comes to, yeah, this. So, this is the problem right here. So, this is parable, but this right here might as well just be like a special attack that you can't even do anything about. So, I'm just going to run away from this, be, you know, because I don't want to do this fight more times than I have to. So, trying to get this parry out, and boom, nothing. So, you know, just stand near the wall, take my heels, and just get as many swipes in as possible, all while avoiding this lava pillar here. And here's something else I really don't like about uh, the movement. Is, okay, finally got the disarm there. Um, when he summons this weird lava pillar thing, you have to be precise with uh, movement here because chances are he might get a little nicked from, take some damage from the uh, lava pillar here or just by standing near him, I'm guessing the flame club, which is, I don't know, like, if there's one thing I can not praise this game for is that it doesn't have uh, contact damage. I am thanking God for that. I mean, now I say that, but the little bastards that appear out of nowhere, no, they have contact damage. So, anytime that this dude does like the, um, does a little flame dash attack, I just wanted to get on the walls because I honestly cannot bother. And I'm trying to get the parry out again. Like, I'm actually trying here. And then here's what that would look like I'm trying to evade this. So, I'm just trying, you know, just trying parrying for once. If it doesn't happen, oh well. But I would like the flame pillars more if, um, I guess, if wherever he's slamming the club, that's where the flame pillar would be. But instead it travels, and honestly, yeah, this is not really my favorite. And then we get the new skill, Sword of Heaven, in this Mega Man 11 um, testing ground. And honestly, I like it. I just don't like how it transitions to this because the enemies just open fire him immediately. You don't get a, you got a weapon screen. Like, you don't get that. You just get to, okay, here's a weapon. Here's the field to test said weapon. Enemies get a preemptive strike even though they shouldn't. Okay. Again, Mega Man 11 did this way better. Where you get the weapon, you see it, and then you transition to uh, the little testing field to test it out. Um, this level, actually, I kind of like. It's pretty straightforward, but the one thing I like about it is the concept. Uh, that is a sniper. <laughs> that is a sniper that is out to shoot him. So, if anyone recalls the level, the I think it was like the croc shot from um, Donkey Kong Country 3, uh, you would know that um, the Kongs, when they're in that factory are getting chased by something that's out to shoot them with fireballs and what I like about it is that 
in the Game Boy Advance version, it does an evil laugh every single time that it shoots it. And I don't know why, but I, I grew up with the GBA version. I don't know why no one else ever does. But um, I, I really do like that. That, you know, it keeps you on the move and uh, you're not standing around all the time. So, way to, you know, get the pace going. So, while running on these buildings, which I wish I had more obstacles because this is pretty straightforward. Uh, level design here. Um, I will say that graphically speaking, um, it's a bit passable. Reminds me of Money Number no. Nine, but I don't know. I would have to put them back to back. Which one looks far superior, whether this or Money Number no. Nine does? But as I'm looking at this, I'm reminded of the radio tower from Money Number no. Nine, and that level to me is just, uh, you know, just better, just way better, because um, they're. There are parts where Beck can ride the wind to gain higher elevation, and then you can uh, fight a giant airship. And honestly, I kind of like levels like that. That is when it's not littered with too much um, bottomless pet hazards. And then we get to the elevator as he jitters his way upward. <laughs> Look at him go. Uh, this part in particular reminds me of the Skyver. Or Spiral Pegasus from X5 and Boomerang Winger from X1, where you're right in this elevator, you're fighting enemies as you go. Then the elevator stops and you have to fight some enemies to press on. So, very reminiscent of the Skyver, aka Spiral Pegasus. Don't know why they don't really incorporate the Guns N' Roses names in the ROM hacks, but you know, it's nice to know what their initial names were. Just that Capcom was a Someone in Capcom was a fan of Guns N' Roses back in the day. So, okay, got that parry in, and it feels luck based to me. So, I wouldn't say that the game is bad, but rather this game isn't that great. It's fine as a first attempt because it's a homage to, say, you know, what they said, Dark Souls, Mega Man. But for me, it's Mega Man Zero because, you know, you get the sword play, you get all these sword skills. And, you know, like I said before, I just got this sword of heaven thing. And I almost don't really see a use for it. You know, it's not like the Ryujin or the Hiratsuzan or the Shipuga. Uh, Raku Hoha or the Kuenbu from Mega Man X4, not even um, Raijin Geki, which is a, you know another favorite of mine. It just it feels lacking. Like you give him all these skills, but I don't really see a use for them. Enemies aren't even that. Um, I, I don't think there are any boss weaknesses in this game either. Because had if I would know that, then that maybe they would have made these fights a bit easier. So going up on this hallway here, and this right here drives the issue home with these, re these yeah, these, these little enemies right here, and the guys that shoots the missile, like, th this is so annoying to go through, and I'm just, he just gets, just game bane on all fronts and backs, just trying to get up here. This isn't fun, this, yeah, like, that easily could have been knocked back in a death afterwards, going down that pit. This is not fun to go through. This area right here. Because it's bad enough that damage like this stops movement for whatever reason. Unlike in the extra zero games where you can just keep going. Here it feels like, yeah, it stops for like half a second. And then movement can continue. Don't know how it got stuck in the air there. But it's shit like this. That makes me wish that this team would just go back to the drawing board. And you know, you when you're I'm just trying to parry and there are so many enemies around. I'm just gonna run away from it because I honestly cannot bother. I am thanking God that there is a health upgrade, and I like how health upgrades actually top off the health, unlike the heart tanks from say the X series, because for some reason they don't. So now we go here. I am immediately looking at this immediately reminded of the sniper man from uh, from uh, my number nine the one the the one that's voiced by Steve Bloom that caught that keeps calling Beck uh, doggy <laughs> so even though um, I like this boss fight conceptually uh, this one also is all fair share of issues for one is the field it is way too damn big 
unlike in the Cyberman fight in my number nine where it's just a room and you can actually see where the shots are going to end up in so it telegraphs where the shots are going by showing up like a red line here it feels like Lancelot is getting blindsided by these shots and sometimes they track him like they don't really follow a set path it's just okay where's the shot gonna go to and I don't really like I can't even see the shots coming it, it feels completely one-sided unlike the again the fight from my number nine where Beck is getting chased by the sniper and it just like this fight just really doesn't feel all that great to go through especially when you're just trying to find out where they are and then yeah you just keep getting shot by all this sniper fire here and the almighty push like damn dropping bombs too so okay so parry and again nope never mind never mind so I'm trying to get the feel of it and then they just yeah disappear and then getting shot again trying to heal leaving my hit phantoms they don't really matter so you know still trying to figure out where this boss is in this big ass field honestly it doesn't this doesn't feel like a boss arena to me it, it really doesn't it feels like something that should have been part of the level and as you just saw you know the shots going through the floor this boss man I honestly wouldn't even make it like this this is just not fun to go through so back here and yeah you can tell that this is a Mega Man X or Zero game if they're gonna put in a warning like that which honestly I do like so you can tell what the inspirations were I just wish that they would pay more attention to what it is that they're trying to you know create a homage of because it's straight up just Mega Man Zero but honestly sometimes it just really doesn't feel that fun to play like even trying to parry here just feels so restrictive to the point where it's like no you have to buy these upgrades to make the pairing feel better but honestly I feel like the only time that parrying or blocking is worth anything is like in Jedi Fallen Order where you get moments where an enemy is about to do an attack that's unblockable and you know you see that anytime like someone glows red or when you see something that looks unblockable you know that's how you tell and the game does tutorialize on that when Cal is fighting the second sister and for that honestly I applaud it for doing so because for a game like that that's supposed to be like this Dark Souls game I'd rather have a tutorial like that <laughs> and parried the other way the other way so yeah and then we get to this part where they flat out just abandon the field and then another part opens up and they're firing a big ass laser yeah down here and I'm curious to know how to yeah how to avoid this without the double jump because how is this even possible to do this with like no upgrades and I just really doubt people are gonna do a no upgrade um, uh, challenge playing this oh my god this hurts to do knowing that he has to go all the way back he has to do this trek just to catch up with this person it is and the only thing that can happen is parrying so yeah there you go that it uh, I mean finally gotta you know disarm in yay but you know at what cost you know the fight honestly really isn't that good for me deflection and again you know don't even give me time to use it he just gets shot the moment he says foot here so that's kinda like a basic zero skill just to fight shots usually it's like the shot eraser but I guess now uh, you know it's just a straight up deflection and honestly that's pretty cool kinda like um what's that one move from um uh, x8 that zero gets where he can just deflect shots it's like giggle metal is uh, weakness but um 
yeah, it was as busy as it gets. So now we're on the train, and honestly, train levels are my another one of my go-tos. Rather it be like Slash Beast from X4. I kind of like Panther Flock Loss from X uh, from Zero Two. That is when you're not dashing all over the place because it's hard to see what's in front of Zero when he's doing so. So I just take the walk. Living on the deck, Metal Slug Two. Uh, the pa Paper Mario Color Splash train level isn't that bad either. Kind of got stuck trying to figure out how to progress through it though, but I managed to pull through. I think it's one where you have to alternate uh, part of the train to climb onto it, like the top of it. And um, like the train board from Mario Party 8 uh, as well. That's that's a, That was a fun board to go through. And whoever was a fan of this helicopter... I'm just gonna say it. Um, maybe too much inspiration from the helicopter mini boss from Metal Slug. So, because there's a lot of them here. And um, at first, I thought whatever these were on the train, where you see these red flashing lights, I thought that was coming from the missiles, but I guess not. Or, you know, bullets from the helicopter, but no, I guess not. So. And uh, as a bonus, uh, the boxman in the back, taking uh, inspiration from Wedgie the Hedgie. Silver's a terrible character. So, yeah, that's fun, I guess. So now we have our third helicopter. Alright, just like the first one. And the second. So, whoever saw the helicopter from, um, you know, that aircraft level from Mega Man Zero 2. Must have really like throwing, yeah, said helicopter over and over and over and over again. There's barely any level design on this train. Like, seriously. Slash Beast or Living on the Deck. Excellent train levels. I just don't understand why they couldn't incorporate that in this. Because all you do in this level is just fight the same helicopter like five fucking times. All while avoiding all these silver wannabes with these goddamn boxes. Like, it's, really? So, yeah, you know, whatever. So the the airship from Mega Man Zero 2 that does the same thing is way better because Zero has the buster, the fight is way faster, it isn't up way all the way up there. No, the fight is just better. I think there's only one of them. So, yeah, all the more reason to give Zero 2 even more praise. So now we press on on this train here, and honestly, I think... The train, even like the car level from Rain number nine, is a little bit better than this because at least there are obstacles to go through. So, you know, we get some level design, but honestly, not by much. I feel like whoever made this really didn't know how to make a fun train level because, you know, as I sing my praises, the slash beast and living on the deck, it feels like you really should have taken notes from it. Like, take notes from games that you like and try to incorporate that in a game that you're making. And when that doesn't happen, you get levels like this that are just straightforward, littered with the same mini boss like five times. And then you just end up with this open, kind of bland looking train here. Now, I will say that healing is a little bit better because he is able to move as he's healing. Because last time, uh, he couldn't do that. He had to stop what he's doing, heal, and then move on. So now he can heal, I think, everywhere. He can heal while moving, he can heal while on the wall, he can heal in midair. And it's just, it's just way better to do. So, I said last time that that weird flame club guy, that boss fight was not the best I think this one is worse than that this uh, this ninja man here that is also a martial artist um, there are so many things wrong with this fight that I can go on for so I'm okay with the dive kicks I'm somewhat okay with yeah him blocking I am not okay with the constant dashing and punching because he can just close the gap with ease 
and honestly it's very upsetting so I'm trying to go for the parry here and yeah it doesn't go through because I need to know how this dude moves around first in fact I think that's my one advice when it comes to parrying bosses is literally try to figure out how they move if you're going to attempt this because trying to attempt this over and over and over again is not only frustrating but it's also just not worth it to do I mean what bonuses do you get for parrying in the first place anyway do you get a much better uh, technique like a much better version of the technique upon getting it because I have no clue you know a deflect is a deflect an upper slash is an upper slash a down slash is a down slash that's pretty much all you get a, a dash slash is a dash slash that's it that's all you get and there's nothing special to it either you don't get an upper slash that causes fire you don't get a down slash that you know produce some sort of wave on the ground you know a deflect doesn't make shots stronger when you deflect them and a dash slash doesn't do like a cool spin attack like in Zelda games no like it is as basic as it gets nothing fancy of any kind it is it, it is so bland that it actually hurts and uh, I go back to dashing the dash jump in this is practically non-existent either because when you try to do a dash jump in say like the X-Zero or ZX games you know it feels like it feels so smooth it feels so fluent to do here it just feels like that you can only do one of two things either dash or a jump so I'm heavily relying on dash yeah air dashing the whole way through and honestly it really isn't satisfying to do a dash jump because it's almost just not happening so now I try to do the parry except for the last hit doesn't go through but I'm trying to get the timing down so that way I know and that's the other problem with the pairing is that sometimes the timing just feels off because you can see the dive kick then he teleports to the back to punch you immediately and then after that he winds up like a super punch and it's like no I'd rather go through a rhythm and try to get the parry down that way and not just trying to mix it up because anytime that a game does that where it feels like that it doesn't follow a rhythm for the pairing it's like it's so frustrating to do it and the one game and yes I'm gonna bring this up as he's punching uh, Lancelot to oblivion here over and over and over again because that's that's what it feels like to parry bosses like this I'm just gonna have him hug the wall because I honestly cannot bother it's like okay well you know I try playing by the rules I try my best to parry this motherfucker and it's just not happening so one two doesn't happen get sent to a fucking wall okay reminds me of that scene in courts party where the girl gets sent underneath the fucking wall turns into like pasta spaghetti so and then boom there it is okay I have to do that two more times I have to remember how that feels because if I fuck it up so easily with you know very easy to do then I can't do the parry and it's just gonna be suicide these key blasts to me are the most annoying thing in the world this boss honestly might be like second time around I thought the um I thought the one with the flame club was bad no I rather it's this one okay so got it the second time all right perfect anytime that a parry doesn't follow a rhythm I'm just gonna call it on this bullshit and honestly the King Arthur fight from Sonic and the Black Knight fits that uh, that description so perfectly specifically the second King Arthur fight where you follow a pattern with the Wii Remote um, uh, prompts and Arthur decides to switch it up for no reason and that is the most inferior part of the game and I'm pretty sure a lot of people who have problem with that had to uh, look up a walkthrough just on how to do it or if you managed to do it just on your own then props to you so yeah that boss fight is honestly not the best so this level really reminds me of the optic sunflower stage in uh, Mega Man X8 where you have to go through these trials to um, to you know reach the end get better ranks get better awards 
and trying to do that while trying to go for the rare metal honestly oh boy it, it i had to figure out which character to use which technique or weapon to use so i decided to test myself <laughs> i decided to test myself um how would this go down without a dash in the air or without a double jump so because a double jump would be cheating there's no wall climb he can't even move while the cube is moving oh dear god the fizz in this game need to be tweaked so bad because yeah i movement um certain mechanics and uh collision i would feel are the key aspects to make this game better than what it is now and yeah so i'm trying to figure out okay how far would it go i do get another one i think you do get like another one but yeah you don't have to thank god you don't have to wait for the cues to fill the room in order to press on, you know, just get to the end. So, thank God for that. Um, looking at these cubes does remind me of Blizzard Wolfang because the ice cubes got that go down in this one area where X needs to climb up is another one. And the ones with the open gap are just the dumbest thing ever because for for the ones that have the open gap an ice cube just suddenly appears when the rest of them fall down. And for those that, you know, played X6 that know that level, you know exactly what that means and what it looks like. It's bad. So now we get to the uh, the uh, trial of power here, and we get dudes with swords. Awesome. And this is where the issue with these missile men really come in. Because even though there are moments where the missiles don't go through the floor there are moments where they do go through the floor anytime a game like this is littered with these stupid ass missiles and you turn into a goddamn bullet hell again I'm gonna give you shit for it it's not fun to go through okay not even the deflector can help so I mean it kinda helps because the bullet can go through enemies but when you're trying to parry and all these missiles are coming in and then you get these little bastards coming out of nowhere. These little green bastards coming out of nowhere. Trying to wreck your shit. It's just not fun to go through. It is painfully annoying. Painfully. So, you know, trying to go for the parry. But I don't want any of these missiles or bullets coming in the way. And I hope to God that he's somewhat invincible as he's parrying. Because when he does this, he's wide open while doing so. That is, That can be a cheap shot. Just like that. Not the green dude, I'm talking about the missile. For that to happen. Okay, because I like the idea of parrying, but at the same time, not really. It leaves them open for attack, and it can lead to cheap shots. And, you know, just like the swordsman, like, I feel like it's a little bit like the hammer, but I f it's a little bit better. So, you know, then we got the missile man here, with these missile, uh, these heat sinking missiles here, which are just so goddamn annoying to go through. Like, there, all these little complaints that I have, sure, they may be little, but they get bigger as you go. And honestly, that is the worst thing that could ever happen in a game like this, where you have little complaints, but it's the little complaints that makes a big, big difference. And I think that's something that this team should really take into consideration. Especially when you go through areas like this, where you can't really tell what's above or below him. So, you know, I kind of like the idea of this level. I mean, it honestly, if I were to look, if I were to compare this to Optic Sunflower, Optic Sunflower just looks way better. You know, that looks like it's made out of crystals, and sometimes it's just pretty to look at. Here, it's like, okay, you know, here's a Tron grid. It looks like you're in space paranoids. It is, again, as basic as it gets. And, you know, like I said, I praise the graphics in this, but sometimes that's honestly not the case. So, the best looking level that I've seen was the lava area with the with the elevator. You know, that's the best level that I've seen thus far. And actually makes me wish that um, Blaze Helix could have that sort of design. And if you're going through the second route, uh, it kind of does. No nightmares things to fight no rising fire 
I'd be okay with the Rising Fire, but kind of like Flame Stay from X2, where X has to, you know, run away from Rising Fire in a volcano, or lava in this case, that case, that's fine. This area really makes good use of Yoku Blocks, the disappearing blocks from classic Mega Man games, and, um,. I'm trying to figure out how it's possible to do this without a double jump. So let's see if he can do that. And trying to get up this little tiny ledge here. Once again, the problem of collision. He really has difficulty trying to roll run on this ledge here. So I just said, fuck it. I'm just, you know, keep going. So, because, yeah, and then get blindsided seeing that crap. So... You know, I try to give this game the benefit of the doubt, but, you know, doubt I still have. And, honestly, it's really sad when I think about that, because when I see games like these, I do think that they can be good. I do think that it can be better than what is presented. But, honestly, in the full package, I'm just not seeing it. I'm really not seeing it. And, honestly, it shouldn't have to feel that way. This is their first game, so I'll give props when it's due. All A's on all the tests. <laughs> I'm a straight A student. So, no, I, I really think that, again, not bad, but at the same time, not great either. Uh, this might be quite possibly one of the better fights. And I think that's probably because of how it's telegraphed. So this guy that looks like a weird psychic man, um, I kind of like how this fight goes down, so, kind of, sort of. Um, the faces that you see on the back can either be like a like a joyful face, an angry face, or you know, a happy face, it's like a green happy face, a yellow happy face, or like a red angry face. So yellow means that he's gonna make some blocks move when he shoots projectiles happy face like this means that he's going to shoot sparks all over the floor and the angry face means he's gonna cause some explosions so I really kinda dig how the pairing works in this but there is one problem with this fight that uh, you'll see later but yeah angry face he's setting up explosions now and, um, it gets pretty hectic when he's shooting off, like, multiple of those. So now, you know, yellow face, so he's moving blocks now, which can and will be a crushing hazard, especially when he's doing this. So instead of just waiting for the opportunity to parry, no, just take my swipes. So that's exactly what I plan to do. So, no, just take my slides because I am not going to play the way to game during shit like this. Where he's just hopping around, causing all these blocks to move, causing all these explosions. That phantom up there is a bomb. Just like that. <laughs> and then when you try to parry, um, it's hard to tell which one is which. So, when I'm just trying to get the parry out, and it doesn't go through... Jens are might be hitting the wrong guy here and set up an explosion and you know suffer that consequence because of it. So get you know get out of here because there's a crushing hazard. Get rid of that even though it's, a, even though it's an explosion. Just um, try to get through all of this and take as many swipes as I can. I might as well just treat this boss like uh, like normal because oh yeah look at all this. Like, Jesus. And then just trying to get out of here. And then it just doesn't happen. He's... Anytime he gets comboed, he can't move. And that's the worst part that could ever happen in this game. Is Lancelot gets comboed, he can't move. He gets just game banned on all sides. And then, you know, he just... He's cooked. So, you know, something else that I really don't like about this. And... You know, when it turns into like a bullet hell, like, I'm not even asking for iframes here. I'm just looking for a way to get the hell out of this. Like, say you get comboed in the game and then you get the opportunity to escape from it. Like, that should be what should happen here, but no. 
it doesn't. So, you know, getting combo like this is annoying. Trying to... Ugh. Oh, man, sorry. You know, trying to parry while the doppelganger is out is also annoying. So I said, okay, no. Just, no. Just treat this like a regular fight then. Because I really don't want to go through this again. Just to go for a parry that I will most likely not go through. So... Yeah, and him jumping around like this, like Magna Centipede. Okay, no, I had enough. So, no, uh, no, that's it. That is, that is it for this boss. I don't really care about the disarm. I don't care. Earth carving, I hardly ever use it. In fact, I just don't use it. But I will say, actually, now that I'm thinking about dashing, uh, the double tap dash is here, where you double tap uh, either left or right on the D-pad to dash. Now, I understand that people use the L button or the R button to set up their dash button. And, yeah, for people with tiny hands, probably. Or just make themselves feel comfortable. But, um, yeah, there is a way to remap buttons to get the layout that you want. Just not in-game for whatever dumb reason. The double tad dash, however, is a staple. You can't turn it off. And... Honestly, yeah, you know, when it comes to player choice in button inputs, that should be an option to either turn on or turn off the command dash if you don't want it. So, for that, I like it, but at the same time, you know, give players the option to either uh, turn it on or turn it off. And I think the only game that does that is Mega Man Zero 4, where if you don't want the double tap dash to... If you don't want it, then, you know, just turn it off, and you don't have to go through that. So, you know, I know some people out there really don't like it. For me, you know, I have a use for it. So, you know, I, I tend to use it from time to time. I'm just glad that it's here. It would be better if the dash jumping just felt the way it's supposed to, but no, it doesn't. So, yeah, just going through this last... Um, going through this last um, stretch here and we get another helicopter and it's not like the helicopter does do anything fun like try to go and drop bombs all over the place like in Metal Slug it takes his time drops some missiles bullets or those little bastards and then back to the usual just floating around shooting missiles could anyone not think of anything fun to do with this thing it is the same helicopter from the train level and if you beat the train level before this well you're gonna be drained from fighting this helicopter alone because it's like do anything interesting with this do anything fast-paced do anything exciting it's just you show up you shoot your missiles you fly away you do your own attack which Lancelot can't even harm the damn thing when it does and then is back to shooting missiles again so, yay. So, yay. Yeah, we're finally getting to the end of the Lancelot part here. And... Yeah, this upcoming fight really drives the issue home of... Really drives the issue home of almost every problem with these fights that, uh, that I've had. So, these swords up here, anytime he swings his sword, the swords go lunging at us a lot here. And honestly, I would prefer it if they weren't there, because this guy is already capable, as you can plainly see. Shooting all of these sword waves, and it's like, you don't, you, you really don't need those swords. Or, I say... If you're going to have the swords, then Lancelot should be able to damage them. And no, that doesn't even happen either. Like, it just... It, it just... It just doesn't happen. So... You know, I really, really don't like... When you really don't know how much of an opportunity to have the fight work in your favor here. So instead, what I'm doing is just the basic three-hit combo. Again, I'm not using any of the other sword styles because they pretty much amount to nothing. There is no way to parry this man, even though there should be for some good old sword play. 
and it's like it's, it's kind of disappointing that the only way to parry bosses is when they do their special attack it's not when they swing the sword and then you can have like a clash of swords and then you can have like a little duel to determine who wins the outcome and does the damage kind of like um uh lego star wars lego star wars i played it where you get these like lightsaber duels and then you can actually do like a button mash to determine who wins the outcome or god help me again sonic and the black knight where anytime characters clash their swords, um, you can shake the Wii remote to do a little clash. Even though uh, those prompts in those games hardly ever fucking work. You know, I got it to work in the Lancelot fight once, but everything else, Galahad, Percival, nope. And then once again, I'm talking about the King Arthur fight, and there's something he does here, which really makes me remember that. So now he's in his super mode, I guess I'm going to call it. And every swing that he does produces like a, a, a power wave attack on the ground. So if you thought the fight was hard, then you know, it just got, it got a hell of a lot harder. Especially when we have these stupid swords here. So I'm just kind of playing the waiting game. And I just want these swords gone. And all of these wave attacks... You know, they push them back so hard, the knockback is terrible. That's the exact I was talking about. You have to parry all three of those. That's like nine parries total. The only time that you can parry them is through all of this. And, you know, uh, again, it's just disappointing that you can't really have a good old clash of the swords with them because, you know, we see that little cutscene of him clashing swords. But that's not really a game mechanic. It's just, okay, you know, you have a little clash of swords and then, you know, you fight this guy. Oh my god. So, like, it's so stressful to do, especially when he's, like, near, you know, um, near zero health. And then you have to do the whole damn fight again from the very beginning. Oh, yes. There is no you continue from this fight. You have to, yeah, I'm trying to get the timer down, doesn't happen. Got comboed, back to the start. I am editing that out because, like hell, I want to see that crap again. You know, some of these I, I trimmed, you know, for viewership's sake, because sometimes playing this game is just not even all that great either. You know, when I had to put up with all these restrictions and all these what-ifs, and just getting my ass handed to me more times than one trying to get the parry down timing down for this and then this is the end result it's like I can't just have a good old parry and then I tried this the last swing screws me up because I like it when it has a rhythm to it this doesn't have rhythm just like fucking fight uh, just like fighting King Arthur and Sonic in the Black Knight for the second time and you have to do those stupid ass Wii Remote prompts to block all of his attacks where the sword swings are either delayed or quick and I really don't like that it drags out the fight so long if it sped up as it went that would be fine because at least you know that the pacing is increasing as you go and you can feel that and this it just comes off as which one is quick which one is delayed you know what's the timing going to be so it's like I have to do trial and error just to figure shit out instead of just relying on my own skill so now just evading all of yeah all of these attacks if you do not have double jump or air dash good fucking luck I really don't know what happens when you don't have either and honestly I don't think I want to know because This, like a game like this I can see air dashing or just basic dash jumping essential not to the point where it feels like that you have to use it it just feels like something you can do you know it doesn't feel like that the game is constantly telling you hey you gonna do this dash or else you're not gonna make this jump like at no point do I think the game for Lancelot um, does that 
I mean, dash jumping doesn't really feel that great to do anyway because he can only do like a short hop and that's like near the end of the dash. That's like nowhere in the middle where I can just dash and jump at the same time like I can in X0 or ZX and get a satisfying jump out of it. So, you know, small complaints, they get bigger. And honestly, they do. So, trying to parry this too early, really trying to get the timing down, and now I have to wait for another swing. But honestly, I say to hell with that. Another thing I don't like about this fight is that sometimes when you beat him the first time, he just decides to keep fighting even though he's not like near health. What is up with that shit? So now we're playing as Galahad, and Galahad's mode is absolutely stupid. It is dumb. The full rundown is this. Um, Galahad only has three levels, but um, for him, anytime that Galahad is defeated, it is back to level one, meaning that you could be a level two or three, and if he were to fail in whatever it is that he's doing, um, then it's back to the beginning, back to the first level, back here, which is stupid. So now he can't heal himself like Lancelot can. So the only thing he can do is assassinate uh, these enemies to uh, regain health. And you already know me when it comes to assassinating. I don't like parrying the drill guys because it feels luck based. I don't like parrying the hammer guys because uh, the window of opportunity is so goddamn small that I might as well just, just whack him into oblivion. And I don't like the fucking hammer, uh, the, uh, the missile guys, because they keep shooting all these annoying ass missiles, these little bastards that keep showing up out of nowhere. Some of the enemies here are just annoying, and honestly, the variety just needs more. Got blindsided by getting hit by a box, and then getting comboed by these little assholes right here. Okay, I think the enemy variety could have been better, because look at the enemy variety in Zero and X and... Honestly, they just feel like they just have more variety in it. And honestly, they do. Because you look at, you know, the Baudivus, you look at the Gun Vaults, you look at the Axe Maxes, the, the Hunkenmers, um, you know, the Metars, the, you know, even the, even like the, the mini boss is the next one, the Bee Bladers. They're just better. They're, they're just iconic enemies. From the way they look to how they move, like, they're just iconic. And there's, it's like, these are trying to be, like, the Pantheons from X, uh, from Zero. Zero, one to Zero, three. And even the Pantheons have way better variety. There's one with a gun. There's one with, like, a zap sword. There's one that has, like, big-ass arms. You know, that either punches, there's, like, a dash punch. Okay, like, there's one that acts like a zombie. There's one that crawls around. You know, there's just so many. Here, it's like, here's one with a gun. Here's one with a shield that shoots annoying missiles. Here's one with a hammer. Here's one with a sword. Here's one with a drill. It's like, what, you can't think of anything else? Like, you can think, you know, one that punches hard, or maybe one that, um, you know, maybe take a homage from bosses like these. You know, not even the ones, you know, or maybe they have a jetpack, who knows. But, yeah, oh yeah, he also has these daggers that he can use to teleport. But I hardly ever use these because they're just a death sentence. Because shit like this keeps happening. And here, I think the fight with this guy is much, is a little bit easier, but not by much. Just got a game over, so that means that whatever points I get... I can use this to upgrade whatever skill is randomized. Should have brought that up. So I have to equip skills on this dude before I head out. So I go to done, back to the title screen, back to the start. This is how fucked up this mode is. And when I say back to the start, again, I don't mean back to whatever level you're doing. I mean it is back to the start. So every time that Galahad dies, get it gets a game over back to level one and I'm not having any of that shit so you may notice that the health is getting longer I keep upgrading stuff in his arsenal and you know some of the stuff in his arsenal is pretty damn good I can upgrade health 
I can upgrade his chances of parrying. I can upgrade, um, there's one that I actually like where you get a full health upon death. So anytime that Galahad dies, he can, um, uh, he can regain his full health. And honestly, I like that. The closest you're going to get to that in the X game is, um, in the Phoenix armor, making this corrupted. Shout outs to the guys working on the game for like 10 plus years. You know, that game has been at hard at work ever since I was in middle school. So. So, um. I, um. All these little disappointments that I have. You know, I feel like they're amplified in this. And then he also bought a move where his attack gets stronger anytime he doesn't attack for like 3 seconds. So, you know, that's always cool. Come back with the charge drop and Kid Edgar's Uprising where you have to wait for the charge to actually uh, get ready. Oh my god. So now that I know that I can just get a game over, uh, now that I know that he can just be sent back to the very beginning upon getting a game over, um, I'm not even going to try to parry that much. I mean, I try a little bit, but honestly, this mode discourages me from parrying. In fact, the next level, uh, after this, really discourages me from... Uh, from uh, parrying and again you know one of the selling points of this game is you can disarm bosses but I don't really see a way to do that in this I don't see the X's next to his name so no just fight him okay that's what I do because I, I really do not have the energy or the patience to go through something like that so no I just you know, treat it like a normal boss fight. Do everything I can to stay alive. Boom, there he goes. And then we get into the other bullshit part of this game, uh, the cutscenes. I've been skipping them because my focus wasn't on the story, it was on the game itself. So, like I said before, if Galag gets the game over, it is back to the start. These cutscenes are unskippable. So that means... That every time you get a game over, guess what? You're also seeing these cutscenes that are unskippable. What the absolute fuck is this horse shit? Because it's bad enough that you're giving me this bullshit restriction of not using a continue, but I also have to sit through this fucking cutscene. So I just got up, left, and just got some water because like hell I'm going to be seeing that every time I get a game over. No, I might as well just do something else while that shit's playing. Unbelievable. And then I'm going to shut up right here because the music here, holy shit. Holy hot damn, man. Somebody must have been shredding that guitar so goddamn hard recording that because what the fuck is this soundtrack? Again, I praise the music and honestly, this might be the best track I've heard in the game so far. As for the level itself, um, it's pretty damn bad. So all the enemies are now... Uh, heavy hitters, so if you thought the hammer guy was bad, well, he's much worse. If you thought the little bastards that appear out of nowhere were bad, well, guess what? They're much worse. The guys with the guns now shoot in all three directions. The guys that throw the boxes, um, um, they now, every time the box lands on the ground, they split into three boxes. And, um, the guys that shoot missiles, I think, I think, eh, I think they're about the same. Nothing I've noticed. Um, anytime he gets hit by these guys, it hinders Galahad's movement. These red boxes, they are 
hot, hot, hot. So they burn you to the touch. So, yeah, watch out for those. This is where it feels like that it pays homage to X6 because the level design in, say, Gaze Laboratory is the worst fucking thing to ever exist in, in the history of anything. And here I kind of feel like that because you have to heavily rely on air dashing to get through anything. So last time I said with Landslide, it doesn't feel like that you need double jump or air dash. Well, in this mode, you might as well just have those. Galahad never loses them anyway. So, yeah, like level design is like this. I'm like, what is this level design? What am I looking at? You got those hot steel boxes in the bottom there, which will continuously do damage on Galahad. So what the hell do you do? So it turns out that you have to jump on this pillar here, jump, no, drop off, and then jump to the other side. And then after that, you have to jump across an air dash, get another jump in if possible, and then land on this box right here. So I'm, I'm just like, okay, this feels like something that Mega Man X6 would do. So then, you know, home stretch here, and then we then there's like all these other enemies here and okay I think I remember what the drill people do I think they just go further and then you get all these flaming boxes that just go down you know this level honestly I can understand the concept behind it but honestly no and pairing honestly just isn't my strong suit so I just said no he's slowing down because of little bastards slowed him down I don't know what the fuck is happening, and honestly, I don't really care that much. All I know is that the enemies just got a little bit more annoying. I want no part in this. Also, uh, speaking of annoying, the first boss is back. And this time, it is much worse. Oh my god, it is so much worse. The shield moves around in all directions. You got these flaming boxes that are raining down like hellfire. The bomb, uh, the shield continuously throws down bombs. Oh my god, I hate this so much. Why does the shield throw bombs? Why are there flaming boxes just falling down? Why? Why, oh why is this boss fight a clusterfuck? Not worth parrying. I rather, I, I, no. No, i rather play access than deal with this shit again. And yes, that, like, I'm talking about regular X6. Not the Ends Edition or the Tweak Patch. No, just, I'd rather boot up just X6 with the Ultimate Armor and just do it that way. Fuck trying to play X6 normally. Fuck doing that shit. Okay, it, it's, it, it, I, I'm, I'm, no. And then using a the dagger is also bad because it teleports them, but that just gives the enemy the opportunity to just to just swipe away at him. And honestly, I don't like that. So trying to get as much hits in as I possibly can. These bombs are amplified with whatever the fuck is happening. There's a resurrection there. I am thanking God he has this because without it, I would have lost all sense of self. This boss fight is everything wrong with this game here. You have all these obstacles in the ceiling that don't need to be there. You have this shield that drops bombs, which doesn't need to happen. It's like, this is why I'd rather just have better control in fights like these. And I'm talking about, you know, just parrying the shield. Like, again, just, you know, take notes from Ganondorf from Ocarina of Time. How his fight went down. I, I rather just have that. These bombs are annoying. The metal, the, the heated boxes are annoying. Just trying to get swipes in all while he has his shield up is also annoying. And it's like, it's like a fucking, no, this is not how you did on a boss fight. Just got a game over, so you know what that means. Finally got this one. Can't pay for it. So now I gotta get this shit randomized again just so I can get it back. I'm back at the beginning. It's like, and I also don't like how the menus are handled in this either. It's like, first I have to select it from the menu, and then on the sub menu on the right there, it says, oh, do I want to equip it? It's like, this is why games like this have the whole button down to equip option. 
or hold this button down to to upgrade not select it and then choose if I want to upgrade it or not and then I accidentally go to launch to start the level so I'm just trying to upgrade my health I'm trying to upgrade all these skills even going through the like like this like if I want to select something and then it says equip like why can't I just hold down a button to equip it why do I have to select what I want to equip and then equip it that way it feels clunky and I'm just trying to go to equip and then I'm constantly going to launch it's like no this is why games with skill trees have the option to hold down a button this feels awful to do and honestly I don't like it okay playing as Galahad in this is the absolute fucking worst it is so damn bad because of all these stupid ass decisions and going through like I, I was actively getting frustrated as I was playing this like shit and when I'm just trying to re-roll and try to equip shit I accidentally go to launch and I say all right then fuck it so yeah I'm going back here try to parry this motherfucker and then it doesn't go through got a game over back to the very beginning got to re-equip all my shit I fucking hate this mode this mode is pathetic stupid it is so damn dumb to go through and the fact that your skills get randomized it's like there's something that you like but you can't buy it upon a level up so it gets swapped out for something else okay that type of shit really pisses me off because how the hell are you just gonna give me skills say you're gonna randomize them only for me to just re-roll it and then just bet my hopes that I get it again okay and then getting all these honor points thank god he can just swipe away the enemies just to get them instead of paying all the damn time I was like, yeah that's the one that I want so let's yeah use that so I can actually keep it and get enough points to buy it so I, he can just get it permanently fuck like oh my god like even looking at this again really pisses me off just like fuck okay like just just fuck was the only thing that's coming out of my goddamn mouth when I was playing this shit seriously like anyone in the studio who thought this is a good idea I ask you why why did you think this like, I didn't even bother to use any of these other skills because I honestly couldn't be bothered. The three-hit skill was good enough. These other skills don't mean shit. Okay, it's not as cool as, like, not even, like, the other moves from, like, say, like, XA. You don't get, like, something cool like a Johazan, which brute force the fucking, um, shields. No, none of that. None of that. So then, yeah, the shield, <laughs> the hammer guy just flings him over what is this shit because I never knew this could happen <laughs> I might have found a way to like I might have found a way to skip the level <laughs> but what are the odds of that because the hammer bros here are strong as hell I don't even know how the fuck that even happened so fuck it I just press on oh god and then fuck that box asshole that start chucking boxes off screen you fucking asshole oh my god Oh my god, it's so bad. It's so bad. Like, it's so goddamn bad. Uh, one thing I forgot to bring up, another thing that fucking sucks, is that, yeah, yeah, so this part is uncontrollable because he's running towards the boss, but he can actually get one shot and uh, possibly die here. So imagine what happens if he didn't have the resurrection thing on. That is death before the fight even starts you take control away from me instead of doing the classic go through a door to
to fight the boss. No, he has to uncontrollably walk down the path and then fight him. And again, I have no input. And if he didn't have the resurrection thing on, um, that's back to the very beginning. Fuck this mode. I don't know why the hell they would even do something like that. It's like, no, you can't. Why even take control away from the player to begin with? During segments like that. And then not even, maybe you don't, maybe you disable movement from the enemy players. Like, fucking just anything. Like, did anybody even think of a possibility of that shit even happening? Anybody. Like, fuck. Like, playing as Lance Off was just simple minded with some gripes here and there. This shit is a fucking mess. Look at this fight here. How the fuck is anyone supposed to go through this shit? I would love to see a blind playthrough of this because this shit is bad. And I fucking mean it. I I needed someone to talk to about this. Um, has some vis has some friends visiting me a day after this shit, and I'm thinking God they did because I I needed this off my fucking chest. This shit is awful. I can't even control the beam attack because it doesn't feel like a charge shot. Like, oh my god. I am thanking god that I not only upgraded the health to max, but also got this resurrection thing on. It feels like something that Capcom should have done for like, I don't know, X9? Actually, that kind of happens in X8 with the spare machine when you buy it. That'd be kind of cool for like a, um... I don't know why there was like an armor piece for X8 anyways. Like, oh, Jesus Christ, man. Oh, man, I really just do not like going through this. Like, I really don't like going through this fight. And going through this level, um... <sighs> oh, sorry again. Oh, God. Um, the enemy gauntlet near the end is honestly the worst part of it. Because you get all these disappearing enemies, the little guys. You get these hammers. You get the, the ones that shoot the missiles. Like, it's just, it, uh, you know. I, I want to say it's not good, but it's not bad either. No, I think it's really not that fun to go through. You know, it's not really fun to go through this fight either. Because I have to go... One, you get, again, you get these fucking boxes that shouldn't be here. The shield that draws bombs and hinder movement. Okay, like, it's a clusterfuck. This, this right here is a clusterfuck. It's just not that fun to go through. And then, once again, fucked it up. I could have used the dagger to teleport behind him, but didn't. And that's back to the start. I'm editing that shit out because fuck this mode. Fuck this goddamn mode right up his own ass. And cervix. This shit isn't fun at all. And it will not be fucking missed when I finish it. Got a game over. That's back to the start. Yeah, I got more power cores. I can upgrade more shit. But you know what? Who fucking cares about that shit? When I have to go back to the very beginning and do this shit all over again. Fuck these box assholes. They're annoying. So, uh, upon coming back, got stuck on the edge. Kind of. In this part, yeah, no control, so he's just moving on his own. Oh my god, so back here, oh god, again, this fucking hurts to look at, I want no part in this, I, yeah, get the resurrection thing on, and I don't even care about the parry anymore, like, I've been stopped caring, like, you know, with a mode like this, where you're basically, um, punishing me for fucking up with these, why the hell would I ever parry? Also, the animation of him sliding around like that while swinging around looks really kind of lazy. Like, he doesn't even move his legs. Oh, Jesus Christ. You notice all these little gripes here, and it... Uh, 
Alright, man. I don't, I, don't, I don't even want to bitch anymore and complain about it. It's just... I just want this shit done. And honestly, it, every time that I go through this, it, it, it just it just hurts me. It, it just it just hurts to go through. Look at the way he just slides. Oh my god. Oh. <laughs> uh, it doesn't look good. Uh, yeah, so... Again, going back to Lancelot, the gripes that I have with it were how basic the level designs can get. Like the building area or the train. Um, the moves that Lancelot gets are kind of bland. The boss fights aren't even that great because they can either just combo him, can be difficult to parry. I don't know about the, the assassin with the sniper, that went almost fine. Fuck this fight. This guy is not easy. Yeah, yeah, you fucking think? Fuck this. Fuck all of this. Skip the fucking cutscene. Well, not that I can. No, edit that shit out. And then we're just here. And then, yeah. So this, this whole level might as well just be a goddamn gauntlet. And then we're back to fighting these assholes again that got infected with some bullshit. Like, I give a shit about what the fuck is going on in this goddamn game. I like how the boss just bounced off that dude's head. Oh, God. Oh, my God. And then it gets even more annoying because the fucking... It's like, okay, I'm getting shot at from both sides. One that with three split, splitting bullets, one with homing missiles. My head is hurting at this point. I'm getting a headache. And honestly, I shouldn't. I, 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 I screamed because it's just, I just want to get through this. But how the fuck am I supposed to get through this when these enemies are constantly trying to jam their dick up my prostate? Get the fuck away from me. Stop shooting shit at me. Stop throwing shit at me. I'm just trying to progress. That's all that I'm, what the fuck I'm trying to do. Okay. So, this shit right here is made even worse because you got these little bastards in my goddamn way. These missiles are going through the fucking floor. Anytime he gets hit by these assholes, he can't move around. It's like, no, I just want to move. I just want to move on. Okay, I just want to move on. I just want to move on. Just let me do that. Just let me do that. I just want to parry people, because that's how you get health in this fucking mode. Fuck this hammer guy, I want no part of it. Finally parried that motherfucker. Okay, we move the fuck down. This dude is facing the wrong way, whatever. Parry you, and then we move the fuck on. I fucking hate the hammer bro up there. Oh look, another one! Like I give a shit. And then we see this asshole again. So I'm just gonna skip through this shit, because I really don't give a shit. So now we're outside, Lancelot's hurt, I don't fucking care. Apparently he's a rookie. What rank? B class? HA! So here is the fucking enemy gauntlet where it is just wave after wave after wave of all this shit. I am trying to jump near him so I can swipe at him. It acts as contact damage. Hey, remember when I said that contact damage wasn't a fucking thing? Well, it is in this mode, fucking apparently. Okay, so, yeah, like I said, wave after wave, so anytime these assholes drop, oh, they have a wave attack now, the swordsman, okay, that's, that's, sure, wish Lancelot had that, but, fuck it, alright, Lancelot is just a, it's just a basic bitch anyway with a goddamn sword anyways, so, yeah, playing as Lancelot is fine, sort of, playing as, playing as Galahad is not because these enemies are annoying, the, the no healing shit is dumb. Uh, the no continues. The randomized skills is also not really a favorite of mine. The level design from the last stage. I like the idea of some of the steel being roasted. 
but some of it kind of reminds me of Clans of Mega Man bullshit where you fall down a hollow with spikes. In fact, one thing I didn't mention is uh, when Lancelot was falling down said hallway with the flaming um, steel blocks, um, there's another batch of those that you can barely see, if not not see at all. That is that is cheap damage if ever fucking seen it. So there's way too many of these fucking enemies here, and I'm just I I just want this shit done. All right, I just want this shit done. I'm just trying to get up here, parry, boom, out of here. But you think that's the end of it? No, it continues. So you know, just try not to get comboed by this one bitch ass thing here which all of a sudden decided to have touch damage it's like in fact let me say that right now is touch damage really necessary in games now it's like i fucking get it in like mario games but now even in mario games it's like what's even the point oh no he touched me it's not like they actively hit me as they were moving in one direction like they do in donkey Kong country returns like that little attention to detail Thank God this shit is over, but the worst has yet to be told. No, I say it's the worst, but honestly, no, I yeah, no, that's not that's really an exaggeration. I kind of like this fight. I say kind of these lasers here can just summon yeah these pillars of flame, but uh, it's kind of like Angelus where you have to beat up the hands, and uh, this dude's design is pretty slick. Looks like a, an occult version of Jack Skellington. So, yeah, just beat up the hands. It's not like you can just grab them. I, I thought he could, but no. Actually, it reminds me of, uh, what is it, Lucifer from um, uh, Ghosts and Goblins, where you beat up the hands and you beat up the head. I'm not even sure how you're supposed to parry this thing, but honestly, I didn't care. I did not care. <laughs> I just wanted this shit done and over with, because I know that if Galahad fucks up here, guess where the fuck he's going? I'm not gonna answer that. So he's got punches, he's got lasers, he can summon random assholes. It's, yeah, no. Um, this fight honestly really isn't that bad to go through. But, um... I really just didn't hate this. Um, I mean, I hated the fact that he summoned enemies, which is something the boss fight should never do, especially in RPGs. God, that shit's annoying. Um, then, um, what was it? Yeah, this happens, and then it's like, is this supposed to be a threat? You know, you split the fire, yeah, and that comes out of fucking nowhere. But he can just jump and stand in between, so no fucking need to do too much here. Just stand in one spot and just use your use your jump. Double jump if you have it. I mean, no, when he has it, because double jump doesn't just go away like it does for Lancelot, which... Why? And you know, I said uh, at, at no point does it have Lancelot needs double jump air dash. Uh, except for the last fight in his story. Um, where it feels that he needs it more because that fight is such a clusterfuck with those goddamn swords and the fucking knockback that you might as well just get it when the iron's hot. So, honestly, yeah, I, I just, you know, swipe away at these dudes' hands because I, I just stopped caring and then that's the end of the first phase. No, it continues. Because, you know, he's small again. So now, yeah. Um, yeah, this design is pretty damn good. So, yeah, I just know that if I fuck this up, if, if this run fails, back to the beginning. Back to the very fucking beginning. That means I have to go through that first level, which is just fuck off, whatever, who cares. Except for some enemies that are fucking annoying. And then there's the second one. With all of the hazardous shit, in addition to the buffed up enemies. Then there's the third one with the fucking enemy gauntlet. And the boss fights did more than enough 
to give me the biggest migraine ever found in my fucking existence on this bitch of an earth. Oh my god. Like, I, I think it felt so good to sleep after this. I did this, like, in the afternoon. Not like last time, where I just played it in the morning. I just was up until, like, 6 a.m., and then I woke up around, like, what, 2 or 3 p.m. in the afternoon? So I just say, you know... Oh god, so thank god I tried out the update because, you know, that really tells me that I guess someone in the, in the, um, in the studio cared. Look at his health, by the way, it's not going down, because usually it'll be red at this point. Well, it's not red now. This attack reminds me of Dynamo Man from Mega Man at base, I don't know why, I and I kind of like what goes on here. He uses the last lance to physically attack you. So yeah, I'm not even paying attention to the health, I'm just swiping away at this dude, but I... Now that I'm noticing the health isn't going down, so that doesn't really mesh well with me, because, you know, unless his health bar is so goddamn long that it's not going down in the first place. But no, no, he's taking hits. Like, it's, it's happening. So, you know, just gotta keep swiping at him. There he goes. Time to bash you into a pulp. And I thought it was use the Wrath of God because I tried that. But, no, just keep swiping at him because this is the end of it. It is not as cool as fighting um, Omega Zero, Omega Man Zero 3. We go for that last swipe. There he is. He is down. I just want nothing to do with this anymore. I figured that this would have been like a bad ending. Apparently, it's a true ending. I d just don't care. I honestly just don't care. There's a good fucking reason why this guy mixed reviews on Steam and this was only five bucks. That's all it gets. And honestly, yeah. Rightfully so. I don't think this game is great. It's yeah, no, actually. Um not bad, but it's just not great. That only applies to Lancelot. Playing as Galahad is a fucking nightmare because, again, there are no continues, the skills are randomized, you give me all these enemies that can just bum rush the fuck out of them, you know, you have all this hazardous shit in the second fight, it's like, yeah, the, the third fight was actually pretty enjoyable, but everything else was just a fucking slog to go through, it took way more than usual to do, so fuck playing as Galahad in this game. And honestly, you shouldn't feel like that. This should have been the equivalent to playing as Zero from Mega Man X4 or Vile from Maverick Hunter X. Both of those characters are interesting to play in their own front. Zero gets all the sword swings and all the techniques. Vile can use three weapons at once. You know, his shoulder, his arm, and his leg. And then he gets, like, a variety of weapons after that. But... Playing as Zero or playing as Vile, this is not. This is not even the equivalent of that. So, playing as um, Galahad in this just wasn't that fun to do. Playing as Lancelot was alright. I didn't like some of the fights. I liked some of the levels. My favorite one was the one with the elevator. Obviously, it's like the most interesting one. Okay, honestly, I'd say go back to the drawing board for this one. Go back to Mega Man X. Go back to Mega Man Zero. Especially Mega Man Zero. Go back to Mega Man ZX and discover what made those games fantastic to play through. Even if you have to speed run to get a good sense of how the games are meant to be played, just go back and figure out how those games, you know, perfected their formula in their own way. That's not to say that they didn't lose their edge because, you know, eventually they did. You know, X kind of did with X6 and X7, and then you have Zero, which could have presented something new in the later games, like in uh, Zero, Three, or Four, especially Zero, Four, but each Zero game is pretty damn good in its own right. And then you have ZX, which is like open world, and you get all these um, A-trans and biometal abilities to go through. Like, it's just really good to just pick your poison and just play the game how you want rather be with model l model p model f model h any of the models actually like it's just really good to go through in the zx series and what i'm seeing here feels like a botched version of Mega Man zero 
And honestly, that's why I say that Fallen Knight is a not so great homage to Mega Man Zero. And Agalhan Monkey stuck my balls. <laughs>